Ladies and gentlemen, you came to this video to learn 20 tips and tricks for Escape from Tarkov. Let's jump in and let's learn together. Are you ready? Looting a box or looting a stash sometimes can be a little exposing to the enemy. A little tip that you can do, you can actually search and crouch at the same time. So you're going to have to first search and then immediately hit the prone button and you'll actually lay down your stomach while searching it. Just gives yourself a little more protection so you're not worrying about getting shot because someone sees you looting it. There's three different ways that you can load your gun. You can just press R and that will re reload your gun normally. You can hold R, push up on your scroll wheel and it actually lets you choose which mag you want to put in next. You also see which one's full, which one's not full. Sometimes it will be a question mark, so just be aware of that. You can double tap R, which will drop the mag on the ground. It does reload it faster though, so that way you're more ready in the action. If you're pulling out your scav, awesome, go make your money, but I recommend you do not shoot any other scavs or scav players. If you do that, it messes with the, with the rep with fence, and I recommend don't mess with rep with fence. If this goes negative, this number in the top right hand corner next to your level, you'll actually pay more at the vehicle extracts. So stuff like over by the customs dorms area, if you try to take that, if it's negative, you're going to pay a little bit extra, and the more it goes negative, the more you end up paying. So I recommend that you don't kill those scabs. Fence will give you an opportunity to actually fix your negative rep, but just to save you time in the long run, don't kill their scabs, work with them and make your money. While working on certain tasks, they're going to require you to get some sniper skills. Now, sniper skill is not the easiest one to work on, so I recommend this tip because it's going to help you out a lot. So, you can simply work on the sniper skill by either shooting it and also by reloading it. My tip is typically bring a ton of rounds if you're just running through a map, like say like shoreline ones that are bigger, and just consistently reload it over and over and over. Just make sure this is 4 out of 5, because if it says 5 out of 5, it won't actually reload. You'll have to fire off a round before you can start reloading again. But all you gotta do is just double tap R. You load another round, you can continuously do that over and over and over. Sounds a little bit annoying, but you still level up that sniper skill. And trust me, it'll save you a lot of time and a lot of frustration trying to get that. Especially when you need to get to level 9 for some of these tasks. Pulling items out of your junk cases is a lot easier than what it used to be. So we have the sorting table now. All you simply do is just pull the, the junk box into the sorting table, open them like you normally would, and then hold control and start clicking your items. It puts everything into your stash and makes it a lot easier so you can get those onto the flea market or sell to the traders. You can steady your aim when you're looking through your scope. All you gotta do is just hit the alt key and it will steady your aim. You can also do this with any type of red dot and it'll hold it steady for you. Something to keep in mind when we're going into raid is that if you're using only a pistol or just bringing in a melee, the scabs are going to hunt you down. You're going to be what's called tagged and cursed, which means that they are going to follow you around the map and try to kill you consistently. So I recommend if you're going to go into a raid, bring at least some type of rifle, a shotgun, an SMG or something that's not a pistol or just your melee weapon. But otherwise you're going to get hunted and we don't need you getting hunted. Some of the tasks that the traders will give you will require you to go in to the raid and grab an item and take it out. But once you've gotten that item, it's a specific item like the docks, cases, and stuff like that, you're going to have to sometimes bring them to another location in a different raid and drop them off. If you're not ready to do that and you want to go into a different raid and work on a different task or just go do something else, you can come over to the task slot right here, come over to the right, and it'll say quest items. They'll be inside of these, one of these slots here. You, you'll select it, down here will be a transfer button, you click it, and it'll transfer that to your hideout. That way when you go into the next raid and say you die, you'll actually still have the item inside the hideout stash. When you're ready to do the task where you have to go and drop off the certain location item, just do the opposite. Click the item, transfer back into your inventory, and go do that task. People always during the live streams or videos will ask me questions about the game, and the one question that people ask me all the time is how do I level up? fast in Escape from Tarkov and there's no crazy science to it unless you're very good at labs the best way and the most efficient way to level up is going to be to work on your tasks and not only your tasks but also your dailies and also your weeklies I recommend 
every time that you log in, check out what your weeklies are going to be, check out what your dailies are going to be, and do them. Because people will consistently try to tell you, you know, go kill this boss, go kill this boss. It's not going to be efficient. If you want to level up in Tarkov fast, keep working on your tasks. When it comes to being efficient with selling your items to the traders, here's a few recommendations I would make. Mechanic is going to be the one that you're going to sell all your weapon parts to to make the most money. Weapon parts, just full weapons, ammo, anything weapon related, sell it over to Mechanic. If you've got some type of attire of clothing or armor, sell it over to Ragman. If you have a knife or some type of melee, sell it over to Jaeger. If you're looking to sell things that are a little more valuable, like the G-Phones, thermostats, or anything of those sorts, even items that are like maybe the Loot Lord, or any of those items that are a little more unique, sell them over to Therapist. She'll buy them for the most. If you have stuff like the Diary, the Slim Diary, those items you want to sell over to Peacekeeper for dollars. They'll buy the most for those. That would be rec my recommendation for making the most money. Instead of dragging every single item onto your character, you can actually hold Alt and left click, and it'll automatically transfer all over to your character. And if you're transferring things into the backpack or even the rig or anything in the pockets, you can do Control left click, and it'll actually drop it right in there for a lot faster transition. So your looting is a lot faster. The flea market is a great tool for making money, but make sure before you actually sell things to the flea market, you check with the traders first. Therapist, for instance, when it comes to the plushie doll here, will buy it for 52,000 rubles. The flea market will do the same thing, about 51 to 52,000. But you also have to remember when you're trying to add these items to the flea market, you type in 52,000. Every single item that you sell in the flea market is going to have a fee that's associated with it. So to put the plushie on there is 11,500 rubles. So you're actually losing money by putting this up on the flea market. Then again, if you're trying to level up your flea and you're trying to get the rep up, it's kind of a mixed bag at that point. You choose to decide to do that. But if you're just straight trying to make money, look, make sure you check with the trader before you actually put the item up on the flea market. When you're healing up your limbs with your medical kit, it's going to go through a full animation. Whether it's going for a 50% heal, whether it's a full heal or whatever it may be, it's going to do that full animation. But you can stop the animation right whenever you decide to. So for us, we're going to heal up. We're going to pay attention to that green. We can stop it by right clicking and we're ready to go. You don't actually have to go through that full animation. If you're in the heat of battle and you need to reload but you also need to heal, all you need to do is make sure you start your heal, which I make sure mine are hot keyed. So I start my heal, go into your menu, right click, reload, and it's already loaded to mag. There's no animation for this, so right after you're done healing, you're ready to go. This is something that I found that really helped me out during combat, and I wish I would have known it when I first started the game. So you come to your settings here, you're going to have a few different options. You're going to come to your health conditions. You're going to go to always shown. And something else I'd like to do is go to the, the color scheme as well. I like to go on, instead of going to mono, go to poly because it actually gives it some color. So mono just makes it just a gray, gray scale. This one actually gives it a green hue, which makes it, at least for me, a little bit better in my eyes. So when we come back to the game, top left hand corner now, you've got your character up there with all your different limbs and the health status of them. So for example, if I jump, Obviously, I'm going to get myself hurt, and it shows a little bit easier color scheme. If I come over to the settings and I look at, let's just say we put them to mono, it's still there, but to me, that's a little difficult to differentiate what the actual status of the heals are and what the, the status of the health is. So, for me, poly is definitely the way to go. Makes it a lot easier in the eyes. This tip is to be able to make it easier to hear when you're doing looting in your raids. Now, this is something we can test right here, actually, and that is the interface volume. So every time you go into a raid and you're interacting with a box, you're interacting with a stash, whatever it is you're opening to try to loot, it's going to be, for one, making a very loud noise when you're actually opening the container, and then the rifling is making, like when you're going through all the items, is going to make a ton of noise when you're trying to examine everything. What I recommend is bring this down to volume 10, because right now, if you listen, it's loud. Interface volume, bring it down to 10. You can barely hear it, but just enough. Endurance and strength can be leveled up pretty simultaneously together. And there's a pretty easy threshold that you can pay attention to when you're uh, leveling these things up. The biggest thing is your weight. So if you look down below in the bottom left hand corner, you're going to have your weight, what, actually had, what you're actually carrying. Now I'll typically get set up with something I'm going to bring. So my loadout right here, this is what I would typically bring in. And then at that point, you're still underweight. So if it's gray, that means you're underweight and you're going to be working on, on endurance. 
And the way I usually figure this out for the strength cap, the cap or the endurance cap is I'll start loading in random items. Watch that number. Now we'll hit the button, the number where it starts to work on strength. And you know it's working on strength when it when it starts to turn to yellow. So if you want to figure out that close to what the number is, just start adding items that don't have as much weight. So I put in two guns, start working with the contacts. So somewhere between 31 and 31.6 is when I'm going to start working on strength. And that kind of gives you an idea of like, okay, I can start going through the map. I can get some endurance work done until I hit the threshold. And once I hit the threshold, I know I can go above 31.6-ish around there. And then I know that I'll start working on strength. It's a good way to pair them up at the same time because, well, as we all know, trying to get through the map faster, endurance really helps. And to be able to jump up to certain places that you normally wouldn't to, strength helps with that. Metabolism skill is a very important one. It's also very, very, very easy to level up, and I think a lot of people don't realize that. But it's going to let you go through a raid, not to worry about the dehydration and also the energy um, going down so fast. So this is a skill that I would recommend leveling up as fast as possible because it levels really, really fast. And the one place you can get a lot of food is in an interchange, and actually over in Goshen. Uh, what I would recommend, just going through here, take one or two raids when you're just doing some stuff on an interchange, just grab a bunch of food. It's literally scattered all throughout this area on every single one of these shelves in this little corridor. Just grab everything you can. I'll, I'll usually do this at the beginning of a wipe just so I have a bunch of food on this. And then we'll go through a raid, bring some food into the raid with us, and we'll just consistently keep eating over and over and over. Like I said, the skill levels up real fast. The higher it goes, the less your energy and your water go down and you can go through the, the map without having to eat and drink all the time. So. Just one of those recommendations, get a bunch of food, keep eating, get that metabolism up. There's two ways to throw a grenade. Your one, left click. It's just going to throw it a far distance, like any other game. Or, you can right click, and it's going to do a tossing animation, which is going to throw it a shorter distance. But sometimes it's necessary. That's loud. If you're new to the game, but you're still trying to learn the maps, something that's really helped me out, at least, is uh, doing the offline mode. So you find your character, you don't have to actually have anything on you to do this. If you want to run around the map just to learn it, just pick whichever map you want. Uh, I usually, you know, something like, let's just say Woods for an example. You can still choose between night or day. Go to next. Right here is the enable offline mode. All you do is just click the little box there and a little check mark will come up. You can enable PvE if you'd like to, which will enable bosses and scavs. But if you're trying to learn the map, I usually recommend not checking that box. Of course, you can do random weather conditions or random times. I don't ever touch those, so there's really no point to. All you're going to do after that is just hit ready. It'll take you into the raid. You can explore throughout the map. It'll still have the timer, but don't worry about it. You don't actually have to go to the extractions. The uh, stuff, everything that you bring in, if you actually do bring in gear, will all just be saved and it'll be back on your stats once you actually leave the map. You can also just Quit back to the menu once you finish up learning up what you want to learn. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, my first 20 tips and tricks for Escape from Tarkov. Oh, did I mention there's more coming? Yeah, there's more videos coming for tips and tricks for Escape from Tarkov. There's so many things to learn for this game, and a lot of people are wanting to know what they are. So until then, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video. 20 tips and tricks for escape from Tarkov. If you did, make sure you guys give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below what you enjoyed about the video, what you're excited about for the future. Subscribe, ding the notification bell, and we'll see you in the next one.